new computer animation tutorial happening here. What we're going to get into is making kind of a Halloween e-card or an animated haunted house with a message like Happy Halloween coming out and a door kind of opening of our house and something coming out of it. So let's go ahead and jump into the Wic editor and get started with this project. So take a look at my finished project file here. I've got three layers, one with the house, one with the ghost, and one with the text on it, each one having a tween that is kind of staggered. So the house zooms in, then the ghost comes out, and then the text pops up. So staggering my tweens is kind of part of this lesson that we're working on with timing and all. So um, let's go ahead and I'll start a new project with you, and we'll go create. And so what we'll want to do first, I kind of always like to maybe change my background and um, name my project first. So we'll call this Haunted House. And maybe change your background color to like a dark grayish type color or whatever kind of nighttime sort of color you want. It could be anything, it could be dark blues or anything like that. I'll go with kind of like just dark gray for now. Um, I'll hit apply. All right, good. So. So one thing I, I was worried about is if it was the same gray as this back tone, I might not be able to tell where the edges of my frame was here. So I'm glad that I chose the right gray there. All right, so first layer here that we're on, um, let's call this house because that's what we're going to draw here. So we'll name this one house um, just to kind of get that down. And then we've got our first frame here. Um, I believe that I wanted to make this entire animation 36 frames. Um, one way that, so I can't see as many frames here, I can make these frames smaller by clicking on frame size and make them small. And that just gives me a little more space so I can see all the way to my 36th uh, frame here. And I'm gonna expand this frame to go all the way out. Oops, I created another new frame. So past 35 to 36 there. Let's go one more, cool. All right, so first frame here, we're gonna start drawing this haunted house. So you obviously can feel free to draw your own haunted house, whatever style you want, but gonna go through with you how I drew mine and uh, introduce kind of a couple new um, drawing techniques that we could do in WIC. So uh, I'm gonna put zero for the line weight on my rectangle that I'm drawing with. Um, that's important because I don't wanna stretch, when I change the shape of my stuff, I don't wanna stretch just the outline, I wanna stretch the actual shape. Um, so having no outline is important. So starting with a rectangle here and don't get too too caught up in making yours exactly like mine Like I said um, Rectangle with another rectangle on top of it um, Kind of doing another couple of smaller rectangles on the top I'll do the two on the edges first try to make those sort of the same size um, Doesn't matter if they're you know not quite lined up perfectly because again, it's a haunted house And so it should be kind of like lopsided and stuff like that so here's the beginning of it. I've got my uh, rectangle parts all done. Um, what we could do now, if we want to combine all these pieces into one, um, I could go ahead and just click and drag with my cursor tool to select all of these parts. And then in this canvas actions panel, we have a option to unite our shapes all into one. So when I click on unite there, it unites all these shapes into one so they're not all separate shapes and these will just kind of stay together. Um, you know, I can make it smaller if I want. Holding shift, holding the shift key on the uh, keyboard will make it shrink proportionally. Um, if you don't, you're gonna kind of skew it and uh, change the size of stuff. So uh, next thing I wanted to do was, you could take either your pencil or your brush tool. Um, I'll take my brush tool, I guess, actually. Uh, 10 size is probably a little big maybe for what I'm looking at right now. Um, Smoothing is a nice option of your brush tool. I'll turn that up a little bit to 50-ish. And I'm gonna make these kind of like little triangle points that go on the top of each one of these um, kind of rectangles, kind of making these like spire type things. They almost look like witch hats. Just plays into the theme even more. All right, cool. So got my little peaks going on there. I'm gonna fill them up with the fill bucket tool. And once I get this done, okay, so it's telling me there's a gap. Um, so I can do a couple things. First, I can uh, change the size of this gap fill option and see what it says there. Still saying it's too large of a gap and it's probably because these are separate shapes right now. Yep, yep, shapes you have a gap, shapes have a gap, get it. So what I might do is actually join these again um, making sure that I click drag with my cursor tool to select all of them 
and then I'll go canvas actions and unite one more time so that now this is again a solid shape and then I'll come in here with my fill bucket tool and it's still telling me there's gaps which is a weird thing for it to say but it's still saying it and I guess I could come over the edges with the brush tool again and just kind of like draw a line sort of across here that connects the bottom of these triangles but that is a little odd and now it should again I use the operative word should fill these well this is really strange I'm gonna go ahead and join these again it did not make me go through all these steps the first time I was doing this so this is interesting I'm gonna try my fill bucket again and try to fill these in it's still does not like them. All right, so I guess I'm just gonna go ahead in the old fashioned way. I'm not sure if that's a little glitch moment within Wick Editor or what, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just fill these in with my brush tool. All right, so now I do wanna really make sure that these are all joined and I don't want any little separate pieces here. So make sure that you unite all your pieces once you think you have this good. I'm going to take my path cursor now and do some little tweaks and edits to the shape. So I might move these uh, two peaks or these two points out a little bit to the sides to kind of give it a little bit more uh, shape. The other thing I might do is actually take the sides of these, uh, the house, and kind of like bend them. Maybe I'll move this out just a little bit more too. Um, but give them a little bend and curve so it kind of gives your house a little more haunted type of feel to have kind of like these saggy type walls that are kind of like you know, leaning in just a little bit. Um, you can try and do it to sort of the peaks a little bit, but again, we drew those with the brush tool, so they work a little bit differently where they're fills, right? So you don't get to um, quite control the whole edge of this shape like you do with the ones that you drew with your shape tool, with the rectangle tool, but that's okay. Again, they can be kind of wonky. It's not too big of a deal. And I'm just gonna press forward for making a tutorial video sake. So uh, next thing we need to do is add in windows. So rectangle tool again, I'm gonna go with white for my windows. Again, you can feel free to be creative with your um, choices for your own haunted house as well. Um, I'm gonna zoom in real close so that I can um, get a good look at what I'm doing here. I'm gonna make two little white rectangles um, within each of these kind of spots. Again, I'm kind of doing them a little uneven on purpose um, because it is a haunted house. So it's supposed to be kind of old and got funny stuff going on with it. I'm gonna take my pan tool and just kind of drag down here so I can see a little bit more down here. And then I'm gonna draw in um, a couple of windows and going to leave the space for the door open for now, okay? So I'm going to take this window and make it a little bit smaller so I have space in here for the door. All right, cool. Let's zoom out, zoom, 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 zoom. All right, so Haunted House is looking pretty good. Um, like I said, maybe I'll nudge these over. I'm just hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge shapes over a little bit. I want to make sure there's enough space for that door to kind of fly open and have the ghost come out. So as I keep going here, um, let's add a little bit more to this scene. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to hold the shift key again and then click and drag to make this smaller. We want to start with it really kind of small in the distance. Maybe put it off to the side. And then I'm going to draw with the ellipse tool. Again, uh, outline should be zero. Fill color, I'll do black again. And I'm just gonna do like an ellipse, an oval that kind of comes all the way across here. Um, and then I'm gonna drag it up so it kind of overlaps the bottom of the house. So it's kind of just this silhouette with everything there. Um, you know, you can feel free to add in more details. Maybe you wanna put a couple uh, little gravestones out here just for like fun. Um, maybe you wanna draw a little tree or something else out here. Um, anything else you wanna add, go for it. So now what we're gonna do is go over how to make this zoom in and then we're gonna animate the door um, opening as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this whole shape now. Um, and we are going to tween this. So I'm gonna hit the tween, add tween uh, button here. And I think that I wanted this to zoom in for about a second. So I'm gonna take the 12th frame here. I'm gonna move my scrubber to the 12th. 
and then I'm gonna take my cursor tool, click on this whole haunted house part, and I'm just gonna hold shift and drag to make it bigger and kind of move. It's okay if things off the side of your scene, like the um, gravestones or whatever else you drew on your scene, move over to the side and just focus on the house kind of centered here. And maybe I'll move it down a little bit so I can zoom it a little bit bigger. Cool. All right, so let's check out how this works now. All right, so house goes from small, kind of in the distance, and we zoom in on it being big. And so right about this point at the 12th frame is where I want that door to open. And so this part gets a little tricky. Um, we're going to take our cursor tool and double click on the house layer, okay? Um, then we're inside of the house clip. So the clip that's created when we add a tween. Um, here, we're gonna take this frame, the first frame of the house clip and open this up to be 36 frames wide as well, okay? I'm gonna click on the, I think it was the 12th, 11, 10, 11, 12, maybe I was on 11 actually, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna add a frame right here. Actually, maybe I didn't wanna add a whole new frame. Let's Command Z. I think what I wanted to do was just First, I want to draw the door on here, okay? So let's draw the door. I'm going to choose a brownish tone. So if I go to my oranges and then take something, um, you know, orange down towards black will give you brown. Uh, again, don't have to be using the same colors as me. You could get, feel free to get fun with your colors if you want. Oops, that ended up a little skinnier than I wanted it. So, all right, there we go. We've got our door on there. And now we wanna make it so the door opens. Okay, so on this 12th frame, I'm gonna take my door and I am going to try to use my path cursor tool to change the shape of it. Okay, so actually I do need to add a new frame there. But what I wanna do is actually just take this frame, I'm gonna hit copy, and then I'm gonna to go to this 11th frame here and paste. All right, that's what I wanted. And so what I'll do now is, and I may have to edit this because it added frames to the end here. So it'll be something that you'll have to keep an eye on. If we add these frames in here, we'll probably have to come back and keep adjusting. Um, so just a minor thing to keep an eye on. Um, so what we were doing here is making the door open. So path cursor tool, on this frame, I'm going to change the shape so that it angles up at the top and down at the bottom and just has the side move over a little bit. All right, now I'll take this frame, I'm gonna hit the copy button, click here and hit the paste button. All right, so I did see this move a little bit, but I'll just keep an eye on it and adjust it at the end. I'm gonna move this even more over so there's even more of an angle and the door's even skinnier. And then I'm going to hit copy and then one more, paste, all right? And now at this point, I'm gonna move this so that the door's basically this really thin sliver. I'll do one more copy, paste. Oops, I didn't click over here, paste. And one last move so that the door, oops, the door, I wanna take this top corner and make it so it's actually open the other direction now. So now the door is actually open facing the other direction. So what that looks like, as you can see, when I drag over here, you can see that door pops open right there. All right, so let's adjust the end frame. So we need to make sure that this ends on 36 here, just like um, our main timeline does, all right? Now, if we want this door to pop shut again later on, um, you could just take the first frame here, when the door is shut, we'll hit copy, Maybe you want this door to kind of like slam closed, paste it here at the end of your animation. And then, um, yeah, I got to tweak this ending again. All right, cool. So now um, if we kind of, we'll go back out to our project and take a look at this, let's hit play. So we'll see, we zoom in, the door opens and then it shuts. All right, so one layer done, uh, two more to go and they're actually much easier than this first one. So let's add uh, layer two in there. Um, this one's going to be for our ghost. So I'm just going to click on layer, go over to layer two over here in my inspector and type in ghost so that I know what I'm doing. Going to put a new frame right here where that door is supposed to open. 
So that door is supposed to open there. I think it will only play at opening if I actually hit the preview play button. Yeah, so that's okay. Um, it won't play when you scrub it because it's in a clip, but that's okay. We know that it opens right there. So on this frame, I'm going to start drawing my ghost. So I'm gonna take my brush tool again, go with my fill color as a white. Um, nine and smoothing should be fine for shapes. And I didn't want to start drawing that yet. I'm gonna draw my ghosty. I think I wanted his tail to kind of curl more. My ghosty guy. There we go. We could try one more time. I think I wanted him to kind of be more upright. Yeah, that's the shape I was looking for. All right, cool. I'm gonna fill this guy in. Maybe click one more time, kind of on that edge line there because I'm really having issues with the gaps today. I am not sure why I'm having so many issues with the gaps, but it doesn't want to fill my gaps. If I just click here, nope. <laughs> wow, I'm, so I'm gonna be persistent because it's one of those things like this is a little annoying, but it's all right, we got this. So I'm gonna just go over these lines a little bit with my brush tool because it didn't quite fill to the brim. That's okay. So got that patched up nice. Let's make ellipses with our, to make a face of our ghost. Again, feel free to get creative with your own ghosty uh, shapes. I'm gonna have my guy have two little eyes here and then uh, you know, a little boo face here. And he is good to go. So let's tween him now. All right, so I'm gonna hit add tween, uh, spread this out to maybe 20 frames because I want this to be a little bit shorter than the 10 frames. I want this ghost to kind of like pop out. So maybe I'm gonna come down to like 16 frames here or something. And so clicking on this 16th frame, this is actually kind of the size I want him to be. Maybe I'll move him up here and just um, hit shift and click and expand to make them a little bit bigger. And then I'll jump back to my first frame here. And this frame, I'm gonna actually make them smaller. So I'm gonna hold uh, shift, click drag to make them smaller. And I'm gonna kind of move them right about at the door. And the other thing we can do is make them be transparent. So um, clicking on this first uh, diamond part here, um, we can click on the graphic or the, um, the clip that we have now because we tweened him and turn this opacity down to zero. And so what that'll do is make him kind of fade in as he moves up here. Oh, don't really see the fade. Maybe it's one of those things no, it didn't actually add the fade that I wanted. All right, so let's click here. I'm gonna click on the ghost. Yeah, okay. So maybe I'll leave it at like 0 0.05 or something. Maybe that is better because uh, I don't know why it's not keeping that. Um, all right, opacity down. And then let's see. I don't know what's going on here. I want this guy to be more transparent. I don't want easing the rotation. I want you to be transparent and then become not transparent, but seems to be giving me an issue right now with not keeping that bit. Not sure what I need to do here to make that stay. This clip, I can give it a clip name. Hmm, I don't know, maybe it'll like that if I give it a name. Um, I don't know, it's still not really doing it. All right, well, I'm not gonna get hung up with that too long. Hopefully yours works out better than mine is working out. But um, yeah, so anyways, let's just press on. So last thing we're gonna do is add the text layer. So let's go ahead and um, let's put in our layer for text. All right, this should be relatively familiar if you remember our first lesson. Gonna have that text kind of pop in after the ghost pops out. So house zooms in, ghost pops out, and then Halloween text is gonna kind of pop up. And if we do want this guy to, the ghost to stay 
visible. You just have to click on the last frame here so that he stays on the stage until that uh, ending. So maybe we want to move this all the way so it's in line with that part. Um, but here we are going to add our text. I'm going to zoom back out just a bunch, <laughs> a bit, a bunch, all the same, I guess. Um, I added my text kind of underneath the bottom and sliding up. You obviously don't have to do, as I've said many times, the same thing as I am. You could put your text anywhere. I'm going to type in happy Halloween exclamation point and then I'm going to take my cursor tool click on this text and that gives me kind of the options to change fonts and do some stuff with colors and things like that so I'm gonna look through here and see if I can find the same creepy font or another creepy font that would be good for saying happy Halloween I guess I don't have to look too, too hard. Hey, this one's called Goblin. I guess we'll go with that. All right, so seems like an appropriate font. And then you can change your fill colors here. I kind of went with an orange color because, you know, Halloween. And so that looks pretty good. Um, you know, you can do some different stuff with styles and font sizes and stuff. I kind of just like the fact that we can just take and expand and make this um, whatever size you want. And so obviously here I should probably squish it a little bit so that it fits inside of my frame. And maybe I'll stretch it or kind of have some fun with the, uh, the shape and the length of the font. I'll zoom out a little bit. So let's take this font. I'm going to pull it way down so I make sure that it's off the edge of my stage. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add tween. Expand this out. Let's say it takes, you know, to 25 or 26 frames or so. And again, we can always adjust these. And I'm just going to move my text up so it kind of fits right underneath my ghost. And then we'll see my text comes out and up after the ghost. And so, again, if you want your text to stay kind of visible, um, just click on that 36th frame and expand this um, so that it is the same length as your other frames. All right, so there we go. I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna preview play one more time. So I've got my ghost that comes out, message that says Halloween pops up at the end. So I'm um, gonna keep looking at why that ghost wouldn't wanna go from transparent to solid like he did in my others, but it looks pretty good still. He comes out, right timing, and all is good. So hope you guys have luck and have fun with this uh, little Halloween animation of a haunted house. And let me know if you have any questions or need any help with your own project.